start recording again. All right, um, so I'll review the functions of a skeletal muscle. I produce a skeletal movement, maintain posture, uh, guard entrances and exits, support soft tissues, and don't forget about thermal regulation, maintaining body temperature, especially under hypothermia. A skeletal muscle will begin to shiver and produce heat. Um, so now, um, skeletal muscle itself, the organization of a skeletal muscle, that it is an important concept and there will be, uh, that, that will be addressed in the test extensively. What it's talking about is um, how are the muscle cells organized within a muscle. First of all, muscle cells, skeletal muscle cells are, have two names. They're called muscle fibers. Uh, they can also be called myocyte. So muscle fibers or myocytes. And you should remember that, that you know, skeletal muscle cells have two names. Uh, skeletal muscle fibers are myocytes. And within a muscle, muscle fibers, um, each muscle fiber is, um, is a, a surrounded by a layer of connective tissue called the endomysium. Okay. Then several muscle fibers are going to be bundled together into what are called fascicles, muscle fascicles, by a layer of connective tissue called the perimysium. And then many muscle fascicles are going to make up the muscle, and many muscle fascicles will be held together by a layer of connective tissue called the epimysium. So let's uh, look at that and a picture. This right here is a depiction of an entire muscle right here. So these circles that you see inside are going to be the fascicles and the smaller red dots inside the larger circles are going to be the muscle cells. What is being pulled out here is a muscle fascicle and the smaller circles inside are the muscle cells or muscle fibers and here's a muscle fiber that has been pulled out of the fascicle. So the entire muscle is surrounded by a connective tissue layer called the epimysium and the root word MY means muscles. There's going to be a lot of MY words in, uh, in this chapter. Okay. So epimysium surrounds an entire muscle. So this is a cross section of an entire muscle. This whitish layer on the outside is the epimysium. And then you can see these larger circles inside are going to be the fascicles. Uh, so the fascicles are bundles of muscle cells. So up here you have an entire fascicle. So it's one of these circles pulled out. That is this right here, and that is this cross section of the muscle fascicle, which means that the whitish tissue, connective tissue layer on the outside is going to be the perimysium. And then the circles on the inside right here are going to be actual muscle cells or muscle fibers. And now we have a muscle fiber pulled out. And right here you have a muscle fiber. The whitish tissue on the outside is going to be the endomysium right here. And notice the smaller red dots on the inside. Those are going to be contractile proteins called myofibrils. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge to keep all these terms in, uh, uh, straight. So make sure that you can do that for the test. All right, so let's, um, that this is actually a picture of an actual muscle. And what you can see here are the fascicles. So this is one fascicle right here. And so this white connective tissue around it will be the perimysium. These red dots inside will be the muscle fibers. And notice that each red dot is surrounded by a white area, which will be endomysium. So let's take a look at a close-up of that same uh, PowerPoint. And now you can see the muscle cell here in the middle. And this white layer around it is the endomysium. So make sure you can understand this construction. Um, now, skeletal muscle cells are highly specialized cells. They're specialized for contraction. And they don't look like pretty much in, in any other cell in the body. They're very, very unique. Uh, first of all, they're huge. Uh, they are elongated, and they are multinucleated cells, meaning they have many nuclei. The reason why they are multinucleated is because they were made by the uh, fusion of many cells during development. Um, also remember the cells are striated, 
and the striations, the pattern of the striation follows the organization of the contractile proteins inside the muscle cell. Uh, because it's such a unique cell, the organelles in the cell take on different names. The skeletal, the uh, sorry, the cell membrane um, of the uh, skeletal muscle fiber is not called a cell membrane. Instead, it's called a sarcolemma. And again, sarco in this case also means uh, flesh or muscle. So sarcolemma is the cell membrane of the muscle cell. Okay, and clean that out here. Okay. Um, the sarcoplasm refers to the cytoplasm of the cell. The sarcoplasmic reticulum, or SR, refers to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the cell. And myofibrils are the contractile protein rods inside the cell. Sarcomeres are the contractile units that make up myofibrils. So let's take a let's look at a picture of all of these. So here's a depiction of the skeletal muscle fiber. You can see that it is a multinucleated striated cell. And you can see that inside we have lots of these little contractile proteins called myofibrils. Look on the this close-up look at the of the uh, sarcolemma or muscle of a or a cell membrane of the muscle. Look at these little dots right here. Those represent infoldings of the cell membrane or sarcolemma. So the cell membrane folds inward and creates these tubes right here that are depicted in yellow, which are called T-tubules. So these yellow uh, tube-like structures are called T-tubules. Uh, the blue thing, the blue structure that you see surrounding a myofibril, so the myofibrils are completely enveloped by this bluish structure. That is the endoplasmic reticulum, which we're going to call sarcoplasmic reticulum. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum completely envelops the myofibrils, which are the contractile proteins. Uh, this is a close-up of the T-tubule with the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the organization of sarcoplasmic reticulum, T-tubule, sarcoplasmic reticulum is called a triad. Let me go back to the previous PowerPoint and show you the triads. So here is a triad right there. Okay, it's this organization of T-tubule flanked on either side by a sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, triads are unique to skeletal muscle. Uh, cardiac muscle does not have triads. Smooth muscle doesn't have triads. So when something is unique to a cell, you know that that, that structure must have an important physiological uh, function. Okay. So let me look at the triad again right here. So a triad consists of a T-tubule, and the T-tubule is the infolding of the sarco uh, sarcolemma to the inside, creating these uh, tube-like structures that essentially connect the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell right there, okay? So that is an important component right there. Um, flanking the triad, we have the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and the, the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum has these uh, uh, thick layer here and here on either side of the T-tubule. This is called the cisternae. So the cisternae is a enlargement of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The red dots you see inside the cisternae are its uh, calcium ions. And so the cisternae is a storage place for calcium. So this is a storage of calcium, calcium ions. Um, you can see also these purple uh, structures right on either side. Those are little ion gates which will be open and allow for the calcium inside the cisternae to leave the cisternae into the cytoplasm of the cell. Notice on the back, you can see the myofibril. Uh, let's go a little bit uh, close up look over here. And now we're gonna go deeper into the myofibril. But before we do that, let's review this entire organization. First of all, you have the skeletal muscle Okay, the skeletal muscle is surrounded by um, epimysium, connective tissue fiber, and the epimysium bundles several fascicles together. 
Uh, each muscle fascicle in turn is surrounded by perimysium, bundling several muscle cells together. Each muscle cell in turn is surrounded by an endomysium on the outside of the sarcolemma. And inside the muscle fiber, we have many myofibrils. Now we're going to take one myofibril out, and you can see that the myofibril is surrounded by the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is positioned on either side of a T-tubule. So they have triads. Now notice that the myofibril is in turn made of a smaller subunits. These are smaller contractile subunits are called the sarcomere. So let me go back to the previous PowerPoint so you can see uh, sarcomeres a little bit better. Right here. Uh, take a look at these sarcomeres right here is one sarcomere. Here's another sarcomere. So the myofibrils are in turn made of repeated sarcomeres of units. So the sarcomere is called the smallest contractile unit of the muscle cell. So in order to understand muscle contraction, we have to understand the sarcomere. Again, the sarcomere is the contractile unit of a skeletal muscle fiber. The sarcomere is um, found in the myofibril, and it is a repeated subunit that repeats all through the length of the myofibril. It consists of two Z discs. So the, the um, uh, borders of the sarcomere are the Z discs. And it also consists of two kinds of fibers, thin fibers right here and thick fibers right here in the middle. So the uh, thin fibers or thin filaments are going to alternate with thick filaments. So you have thin filament, thick filament, thin, thick, thin, thin, thick. Okay. Um, we need to look at the sarcomere and understand the parts of a sarcomere. Notice that from the beginning of a thick fiber or thick filament to the end of the thick filament, we have what we call the A band. So the A band represents the beginning and the end of a, of a uh, thick filament. The uh, A band consists of a zone of overlap and a zone of overlap is an area where thick and thin filaments alternate, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. So there are two zones of overlap on either side of an H zone. So this area in the middle is the H zone, and the H zone has no thin filaments. It only has thick filaments. So again, you should definitely know the construction of a sarcomere. Uh, the, uh, the sarcomere is flanked by two C discs or C lines. Okay, here's one, here's the other one right here. In the middle, we have the thick filaments, and the beginning of the thick filament to the end of the thick filament, we have the A band. In the middle of the thick filament, we have the H zone, and the H zone is flanked on either side by zones of overlap, where the thick and the thin filaments alternate. The A band is um, it's the area where we find only thin filaments, and it encompasses half of two sarcomeres. This is an actual x-ray of a sarcomere, and you can see the H zone right there, the two zones of overlap on either side, so that would be the A band, and then the I bands on either side. These darker areas will be the Z lines, and you can see how these, um, the uh, organization of the proteins in the sarcomere is what gives skeletal muscle fibers the striated appearance. One more depiction of a sarcomere. You should definitely expect to be able to identify the parts of a sarcomere in, a, uh, in the test. Um, the uh, worksheets also have sarcomeres that you can work with. Okay. The next thing we need to do is look at the uh, proteins that make up sarcomeres. And we have two types of proteins, the uh, thick filament proteins and the thin filament proteins.
Let's go. She left. Oops, I'm recording. Yep. Yeah, she had to go. So I'm not talking to myself. I've already had one class which I recorded. I'll just use it for the second class. Wow. I know. It's okay. Next next time I know what to do so this doesn't happen again. So I don't have two classes. Hmm? Yeah. Well, not for this particular. I mean, I get to pay for the class. Mm 